we're live. Good. Let's Welcome do it. Thank you. To the Slide Edge Advantage. My guest today is Kevin Tatcher, the owner of Independence Title. He's been around here for 20 years. 20 years. Running the real estate world, literally, the title king. And uh, welcome. Tell us your story, Kevin. Yeah, so it's actually my story a lot, you know, now in recent years, winds up having nothing to do with uh, real estate. You know, I, I do a lot of speaking and, and podcasting, but, you know, we go back 20 years. I was a firefighter, moved down from New York 20 days before 9-11. And the reason I love to share that story is because firefighters, like nurses and doctors and police officers, do one thing really, really well, mm -hmm. uh, and that's run into crisis without even thinking about it, right? So we run into crisis together and then we leave the crisis together, leaving no one behind. Well, the interesting thing is people don't look at real estate transactions as crisis, but when you got all your life savings on the table, you're about to close the biggest deal, you close about two or three of these in your lifetime, anything that goes wrong is traumatic. Right. right. I mean, I literally just left the office and there was a crisis I had to put out. <laughs> so there's always something that comes up that, that I find needs someone to think outside of the box yeah. where, you know, a lot of these real estate agents, they're working with title companies that can close a deal. Great. Customer service is great and the fees are great and they've been around a long time. It's great. But I always say when the going gets tough, what's most people what's run out the door. What is your slight edge advantage? Yeah, <laughs> because that's the difference is uh, you're going to do what it takes to get the deal done in the most efficient, professional, and ethical way, and, uh, and safeguarding these people. So there's this, my, one of my favorite stories is the lady that you, you had a big impact on her life, and it's nothing that your company did. She got swindled, nope. like a lot of people do, with wire transfer fraud. But because of your, you know, your attitude, your connections, and your ideas, uh, you were able to do something with her that allowed her to kind of get out of that situation. I'll let you tell the story a little bit. Yeah, I mean, so she's a single mother of three kids. She was working three jobs, one full-time job and two part-time jobs. And she was closing on a home. She hired her friend, which was the first mistake in buying a home. I always tell people, real estate agents are wonderful, but if you hire your friend or your family, when there's a problem, you're gonna run into a problem. I'm not saying don't hire your friends or family, but hire a professional. If your friend or family is a professional real estate agent, good. This lady was just one of her friends. She was not a professional, hasn't done many deals. She referred the title work to her in-house title company, which basically meant that her boss got a fee for referring business. There was a, a joint venture agreement so she didn't have any relationship with them uh, there was a hack in the system mm -hmm. that they directed her to wire her entire proceeds for closing sixty three thousand dollars to what looked like a legitimate account and that's not just sixty three thousand hard-earned life-saving single mom through 63 that might have been a million dollars to her correct and it was worse because the seller the property was vacant the seller let her move in early with her kids literally sleeping on mattresses on the floor so anyway so then someone tagged me on facebook once once her money was stolen and i got involved and we were able to to stop wow. the money from leaving she, she wound up losing uh part of it we were able to recover half back uh, through our news partners, we set up a GoFundMe. We raised half the money back. Wow. So about a week and a half, two weeks later, we took the closing from the other title company. We got her closed. City Furniture donated all the furniture in the house. We took the kids. They're like, what do you need? They're like, oh, maybe just some bedroom sets. They're like, go get everything, whatever wow. you want. And, you know, fast forward, the story is she, she was able to stay in the house. The seller got her money. And, uh, but it like, changed her life because yeah. it would have been disastrous for all the parties. The interesting part, though, is that no other title company would have had her back like we did. Because it's not like her client. we weren't her client. We weren't doing the closing. It wasn't our fault. She lost the money. We simply jumped in because someone tagged her. Yes. And I said, you know what? I'm going to be the hero that saves the day. You're the, you're the title now, king. Now, maybe I wouldn't have been able to save the day, but thank God this one worked out, as do many other stories, right. because of how far we will go to protect the client's well, you have you protect clients that again that you don't have in circumstances i know personally also full disclosure known kevin for about 15 or 16 years very good friends so i know some things my wife's a broker so i, I hear some things in the, in the trades but you also had save people who aren't your clients by identifying people that come to your table with closings documents mm -hmm. that are forged yep. and they're trying to steal someone's dreams and hopes and, and their investment properties and you have the systems 
to kind of catch that most of the time. Yeah. I mean, you know, sometimes it's the systems, but it's also the training. And this goes to any business, regardless if there's a real estate agent watching this or, you know, someone who wants to become an entrepreneur selling life insurance. It doesn't matter. The systems that we teach and the systems that we implement into our business can be used anywhere. So having a client's back, it doesn't matter whether it's title insurance, real estate, life insurance, yeah. business coaching, it doesn't matter. It's the concepts and, and the Culture, way though. you run your business that will set you apart from your competition and give you that slight advantage. Yes, and that's what it takes because it's such a close, co every industry has its closeness. Real estate is probably one of the slightest competition, the slightest edge will make the difference between living a happy life and giving like Dave Ramsey right. says, like no other, or yeah. you just banging your head against the wall and being those part-time weekend warrior yeah. folks. I just spoke to one on my way here. I tried to get him on the podcast to do a podcast with me. Like, I'm not experienced. I said, it's just about action. Yeah. I said, I got oh, this yeah. text message on Saturday <laughs> and I was running over, you know, now, now we're a couple of days later recording this. And I'm like, it doesn't matter. I didn't know what we were going to talk about. Yeah. I said, I'm going to go and just talk to my buddy and we'll produce it into a podcast. It's going to change someone's life that's watching this because there's right. someone who is just like, wow, I, I can do that in my business. The problem is most won't. And we even translate yeah. that into like our, we're in a networking group together. Why am I number one? Because I care enough to help everyone else be successful more than myself. Right. It, I'm not looking for, it's not about me, it's about you. When you win, we win. And, and if, when people can put that into their business, right. genuinely put it into their business without removing themselves from it, great things well, can happen. Well, I think happen. the problem with most people are willing to do that, but they're not willing to do it for 20 years. That's correct. And you didn't have this success five years into it or three years into it. It's been growing and it gets bigger and better every single year. And you have down years, of course. I mean, but you don't make it to those down years without that his without the calluses, without the habits. That's right. And that only comes by consistency. Yeah, for the so. first time ever, we told the story. We just celebrated our 20th anniversary, July 7th. And I stood up on stage and I told the entire audience that was there, which was all of our clients and family and friends and business associates, how tough things really got years ago yeah. when I was in foreclosure, repossession, eviction, uh, losing personally. my house, lo personally, losing my car. But I'll tell you, the one thing that I always did, and my assistant for 15 years used to tell the story all the time, is I would give her payroll on a credit card cash advance. I never, never skipped a right. payment. That's right. I was, got divorced at a very young age from, from having my daughter. I never once skipped a right. child support payment. Her mother will tell you, he never <laughs> missed a payment. Right. You know, you maybe I wasn't the best husband, but I never missed a payment, never skipped out on child support, you know, because to me, it's about owning your responsibility and not walking away. So a lot of my staff will even ask me, well, can't you sell the business? And I'm like, I could, <laughs> but you're my responsibility. Right. Like, I don't yes. have to work. Right. I could retire today if I wanted to. I work and build the business for them to make That's sure right. they're successful and they have a place to come to earn a living and raise their family because I take that on my heart. I wear it on my sleeve yeah. that like I'm providing an opportunity for these employees. And I also happen to know that now you're even looking at possibly doing a succession plan with your daughter taking over, possibly. I mean, she's of the age, she's just graduated from college, very proud yeah. of that. And uh, her first four way into business is uh, probably following in your footsteps a little bit, right? She's well, we'll see. I mean, out. she wants to test her own stuff first, but yeah, if it doesn't course. work out, you know, then, they all then do. She, yeah, she may want to come back. You know, but again, the opportunity is there. I've it's built there. something really yes. great. I always tell people, I don't want to be a multi-billionaire. I don't want to build this company to be able to sell it for millions and millions and millions of dollars. I want to build a company that is a home for people to come work. Yes. It's a home for clients to come and feel safe. And it provides a lifestyle for our family. We, we live a very simple lifestyle yes we have nice things in life but we don't get carried away right i don't believe in having debt i don't there's a lot of things that we do in life that we just want to live a comfortable life enjoy traveling and we have a business that is ethical moral and we do the right thing by our clients and you're also a prolific writer how many books now so 11th, this is our 11th books. book just came out. Marketing Madness just came out uh, just the other day. What I tell people is it's not about the story, it's about the impact the book has on the reader. Right. And the reason I write so many is because a different impact will be on a different person. So in this case, it talks about real estate and marketing. To me, if I can teach you how to 
build a better business, if I can teach you how to think like a CEO as opposed to a real estate agent, you will have a more successful business. So I've wrote books about my failures, I've wrote books about my successes, right. and about my experiences along the way of what works, what works with social media. Because what happens is you take a lot of these classes but nobody's teaching you any content. They're not telling you like what's working in today's market. They're just teaching what they think is good, but they're not really successful. And I always say like, if you're gonna hire a real estate agent, make sure they own a house. If, if you're gonna invest in some, you know, fix and flip real estate course, make sure the person teaching it is actually flipped real estate. Right and multiple properties. Right. You know, you're gonna hire a coach like you. We wanna make sure that it's someone who's built the business, sold the business, you know, understands business. Right. And that's and the problem. The but these books are real estate intended, but it's it's a lot of crossover. It's crossover. Like this like one, Marketing Madness, crossover. is real estate because it's Marketing Madness, real estate in a digital age. So this one is. But it could this, apply. Anybody, though, in any other industry could apply a lot of, of course, the principles. Of course, a lot 100%. of principles. This one I wrote just came out also this year. It's called the CEO Playbook. This is 52 chapters, obviously one every week for you to go for one year to build a business to be the CEO of your business. So I just wrote about success stories that it's like, as a real estate agent, now I write it for realtors because that's my business. Right. But if I can teach a real estate agent to take this book and become the CEO of your business as opposed to the agent of your solepreneur <laughs> business, you know, you're a solepreneur, you're working out of your house in your underwear taking calls, right? So if I teach you how to build a better business, you'll be that much more mindset. successful. It's mindset and mostly, action. And mostly action. mindset, and action. action. Yeah. And what I tell people a lot of times is they're always like, it's also motivation. And I'm like, it's not, it's actually discipline. Well, if you don't have the discipline, nothing happens. So I use another D word and it's motivation. It's more, it's more related to motivation. So it's not mine, it's David Goggins. But motivation will only get you so far, but it's drive. Right. Drive. It's the drive. Yeah. If you know what your whys, the Tony Robbins five whys, mm -hmm. six, seven, eight whys deep, well, that gives you drive, and then you don't need motivation. The motivation right. is your drive. People who need motivation every day, as uh, Zig Ziglar said, motivation is like taking a bath. They're great, but you need one every day. Correct. But if you have drive, and it comes from knowing your whys, that is what just propels you, and time is linear. It stops for none of us. So there's consistent actions, and the things that you do, I just don't know how you find the time. To <laughs> well, write. listen, I've, I've built a great business where I'm not involved in the day to day. And it's interesting, you know, you, you name a lot of people. Dave Ramsey, I follow. David Goggins, I follow. Um, I just came off a five day seminar with Tony and, and Dean Graziosi uh, watching them. And you're absolutely correct. I use the analogy of brushing your teeth. Motivation is like brushing your teeth, you're going to do it every single day. Yeah. But Discipline is like going to the dentist. You're gonna do it two or three times a year to go make sure everything's okay and make sure you're on the right path and driving forward, right? Yeah. So that's what you're doing. Now, obviously, you know, with business, you're gonna do discipline, you know, you need it a lot more often. But I try and connect it to something I do every day and something that has a connection to it that I don't do every day, but I only do so often. So you wanna make mm. sure like every day you have that drive. So when you walk into the dentist, it's a checkup and not drilling your teeth and <laughs> right. not pulling your teeth and doing doing root canals right, right. so so no surprises know. when those things come up you're prepared Correct. Yeah. yeah so i mean that's why i look at it that that you really have to have this drive right you have to have the drive and the discipline to want to be successful uh, uh, the same agent i was talking to said something to me like i'm he's so busy chasing squirrels and i'm like that's <laughs> the problem you're chasing squirrels when your competition is making 10 more phone calls i have uh, a very good friend stan phelps who says uh you only have you can't ever you can't ride two horses with one ass you know but it's funny because i see some of the influence in here and i'm going to tell you a name i know you tell me if this was an influence it might be sub psych subconscious but patrick bet david with your next five moves and next. the chess pieces on the board. Yeah. I mean, the, the people that you hang around, people you listen to, pe the people that you associate with, they're in your everyday actions, and that comes no, out. No. You know, not to give, not a rip off, but obviously you're somebody who thinks way down the road. Right. Kevin's playing 3D chess while we're all playing checkers. I mean, your next level on everything that you do. It's, you know, Patrick is someone who I follow. He wrote a chapter in one of my books. Uh, I follow him, you know, he's local, so I watch his stuff. And I always tell people, like, I watch his stuff because I, I actually had a call with one of my mentors today, and we were talking about, like, reading a book. And he's like, oh, do an audio book. I'm like, it's not the 
reading of the book or the listening to the audiobook. It's the listening of seven hours to a book. I would much rather pick something up and say, yeah. let me watch it for 45 minutes yes. and implement a strategy where most people are like, they're reading a book a month. And I'm like, what have you implemented in the books That's that you've it. read the last 12 months? That's it. Because right. you're listening to hours and hours and hours and hours of books, but you're not implementing. So okay. I write these books because this is a short chapter once a week. Actionable. It'll take you yeah. 10 minutes to read it. Now it's like, what action? And I actually, in this one, at the end of every chapter, you'll see here, there's a strategy. So, yeah, the, yeah, you know, yeah. we put strategies in each book that will tell people what to do for each one. And this one, the same thing. We have at the end of every chapter, you know, you'll look here at the end of every chapter, it tells you what can you do in order to like set up TikTok for your business, you know, and then we give you an assignment, a business uh, assignment. Like, here's what you can do to be more successful. Right. That and is my worked. goal. It's worked. So in your uh, in closing and landing the plane, how can we get a hold of you? Where can they get a hold of these books? And just tell us uh, you know, what's next. Yeah, so I mean, the best way is my website, which is titlerate.com. There's links to everything, our YouTube videos, our podcasts, or, you know, obviously we love to close real estate for people. So if you're a real estate agent in Florida, we would love to earn the opportunity. And I say that importantly yeah. I want to earn the right to close your deals I don't expect you to just use me because you want to use me I have to earn that but we have so many resources that can teach you so it's YouTube channel closing cost calculator podcasts books uh, and and that's the best way titlerate.com is our website reach out to me very easy to get a hold of you can Google my name and and probably find my cell phone number so uh, reach out I love talking to entrepreneurs intrapreneurs yes. solopreneurs anyone who is just like I want to be better, but I just don't know where to start. And uh, I love just having coffee and conversations with people. Coffee and conversations. Thank, Thank you, you so much. One. I appreciate it. Yep. Thank you. Slide edge advantage. You got to be you and you got to take action every single day. Repeatable and an efficient and effective action. Stay tuned for the next episode. Click below for the entire catalog. Bye bye, everyone. That's it. All right. <laughs> All right.